Thank you for joining us today. Hello and welcome to From Lansing with Love. I'm your host, State Representative Leslie Love. Every month we discuss a different topic with interesting guests. I hope you will find this both informative and insightful. Today's show is something that not only affects Detroiters, but people from all over Michigan. And we're going to talk about what to do in the city of Detroit. To borrow a phrase from my guest, America's great comeback city. Tourism in Metro Detroit contributes heavily to the area's economy, comprising 9% of the area's 2 million jobs, according to Labor Force and Employment Outlook. More than 15.9 million people visit Metro Detroit annually, spending an estimate $4.8 billion. In fact, spending by visitors in Metro Detroit is at the highest level since 9-11. Detroit offers casino resort hotels along with many conventions and multi-day events throughout the year that draw crowds of hundreds of thousands of people to more than three million people. Detroit is also an international city with more than 15 million people crossing the highly traveled Ambassador Bridge and the Detroit Windsor Tunnel annually. Plus many area residents our tourism right here at home in their own backyard with an estimate 46 million people living within the 300 mile radius of Metro Detroit. The area's attractions are numerous and we're going to try and talk a little bit about some of all of them. We have cultural attractions like the Detroit Institute of Arts and the um, Charles Wright Museum of African American History. We have entertainment venues like the Fox Theater and sports shrines like Comerica Park and Ford Field. In fact, Detroit will soon be the only major sports town with all four major sports teams playing within the city and all four venues right in downtown Detroit. So do we have, as our guest today, Deanna Mychek, the Media Relations Manager and Guru for the Detroit Metro Conventions and Visitors Bureau. The Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau is the only organization that promotes Metro Detroit regionally, nationally, and internationally as a convention, business meeting, and tourism destination. The Visitors Bureau is neither a branch of any government nor a credible foundation. It's an independent nonprofit economic development organization and the world's first, the world's first convention bureau. So Deanna works closely with media from all over the country, showing them the best of Detroit. And in her 12 years as at the Visitors Bureau, she has been able to watch the city transform into the vibrant destination that it is today. So I am so happy and elated to welcome my guest, Diana Machek. Hi, welcome Thank to you. From Lansing with Thank Love. Thank you for having me here today. So you must have the most exciting job ever. Do you feel like Santa Claus when you, you do this to just show off the city? It's really a fun job. And most people think all I do is go out and eat and go to museums. <laughs> but I get to do a lot more and actually show people people what's going on in the city and tell them what's happening. Well, tell us. So what's going on in the city? What's happening now? Um, it's summer and we, we, we'd like to know what can we expect this year? From? Right now is a really exciting time in Detroit. Uh, a couple weeks ago, the Q line, which is our new streetcar, just opened up. So uh, visitors can take that from right near the riverfront all the way to the new center area. Um, we haven't had anything like that in decades. So transportation is a big key um, in trying to get people to be able to move around downtown. So mm -hmm. we're really excited about that. There's also a new bike share program that opened up in the past month called MOGO. So those are two new transportation um, options. And then the big thing this summer that's going to open is the District Detroit Little Caesars Arena, which is mm -hmm. going to be the new hockey arena and baseball stadium or basketball stadium for the mm -hmm. Detroit Pistons. So this year is just huge for us in Detroit and we're just moving forward. Wow. And I know I was um, at the uh, fireworks and I know uh, earlier in the year we had the electronic music festival mm -hmm. and we have like these multi multi-day events that happen in the city of, of Detroit. Are you involved in that in any way and, and how do you assist? Um, the main thing that we do at the Convention and Visitors Bureau is we promote these events. Um, we're promoting them to people throughout the state, throughout the country, throughout the world um, because we want people to come here and experience these festivals and events themselves. Thank you. 
The, the Visitor Bureau has a number of ways that you help visitors plan their trip to Detroit. Can you tell us something about that? We do. We are kind of like the one-stop shop. So um, if you're thinking about coming to Detroit, you can call up. We have destination counselors um, on hand. If you have any questions, they can help answer your questions, to, um, help you you know, decide you know, where you're going to stay, what to do. Um, we have a visitor guide called Visit Detroit Magazine, and that's published twice a year. We also have a TV show called Discover the D. Um, that is uh, something that kind of goes out in the city and shows you what's going on and mm. uh, explains, you know, th fun things to do. Um, and then we have maps and we have this uh, discount program where you can get 20% or more at many of our attractions. So we have all these different resources that are completely free. So all you have to do is call or go to our website, visitdetroit.com, um, which is uh, newly uh, renovated. Mm -hmm. So um, lots of great information there. So visitors can uh, reach out to us and we're here to help. So there's a trend of people kind of staycationing. Mm -hmm. And Detroit is a great place to staycation. Um, it, when I go downtown, I feel like I'm in a new place. What is this new downtown that I see? And, uh, and I feel like I could really vacation in Detroit. Do you have a physical location? And, and, and what are some of the things, the trends you're seeing people do when they staycate? So there are so many attractions in Detroit. We are so fortunate by, we have these world class museums like the Detroit Institute of Arts, the Motown Museum, the Henry Ford. So people can just come here and you could, whether it's a long weekend or an entire week and you can go and explore. The main thing is they're affordable. Some of them are free. We have that discount pass that people can use. Um, you can go down to Campus Marshes Park and go to the beach. You don't expect there to be a beach in the center of downtown Detroit. You can go explore the riverfront mm -hmm. um, and all these different festivals that take place in those areas too. So you can really come down and uh, stay in one of the casino hotels, stay in one of the historic hotels like the uh, Western Book Cadillac or the mm -hmm. brand new Foundation Hotel and make it a vacation, a staycation. Right. Um, and a lot of new bed and breakfasts are coming on, online on Ferry Street. There, mm -hmm. there are some and. So the Inn on 97 Wider just opened up as well. Um, so there's all these different experiences, whether you want the typical um, big box hotel experience or you want the, the boutique hotel. We've mm -hmm. got a, quite a few um, new hotels opening in the next year. And then you also have like the bed and breakfast. So there's all these different options for you. But we also have lots of food. So you would think that uh, New York might be known for Coney's, but I think Detroit is like the Coney Island capital <laughs> of America. <laughs> so are there now foodie tours that are happening here? And if so, can you tell us um, some of those? There are. One of the popular food tours is at Easter Market. Um, on Saturday mornings, there's a, a company called Feed on the Street, and you go through and you get to meet all the vendors, and you get to taste. And it's called uh, Come Hungry, Leave Happy. So you really, like, you come and you go through, and you get to do all these tastings, and you are full when you are done. Um, and there's just so many different uh, other tour groups that do uh, bar crawls and restaurant crawls, and you can kind of really experience all everything that's going on. Um, the Washington Post last year called us the a food mecca, and then also we were on the seven places to um, top food destinations and National Geographic Traveler. So people from all over the world are noting this and we have these really great chefs, Michelin rated chefs coming like at the Foundation Ooh. Hotel. So we have a really great destination for food and fun and uh, that's what you really need to have a good good time in Detroit. Yes. So you, do you have a physical location? We oh, do. Okay. We're <laughs> located in the 211 West Fort Building on the 10th floor. Okay. And um, and people can just come and figure out, I, I, I want to do something. I want to create a unique experience. Or I'm getting married and I want to have an engagement party. Is this something that, what are the different reasons why someone would come to the Visitors Bureau? So our two main um, targets are the leisure traveler and the meetings and conventions. So we market and sell Metro Detroit, which is Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb County, for leisure visitors to come here for a vacation and then people to host their meetings. Um, we also help some of those, like if someone like, has a wedding or uh, family reunions are really big um, in Detroit too. Mm. Um, so we help once again as a non-stop 
uh, one-stop shop where uh, we help um, find them their hotels, we help them find their meeting space, um, all of the service providers. We do all of that. Um, tell me something about your history and, and what, what the, does that mean? And are people internationally, nationally looking at what you all do at the Visitors Bureau as a model? Mm -hmm. They really are. Um, back in 1896, there was a newspaper journalist named Milton Carmichael, and he was seeing that Detroit could be a destination for meetings, and he got the uh, business community to work together to try to attract more meetings. And through time, we've uh, grown. Uh, now we have uh, over 60 employees, and like I said, we have a sales team, a marketing team, um, and we are out there selling the city to try to get more people to come here. Um, so uh, we really, I think we really can be a destination that other people look at as a model as how we have come so far. Well, um, why is that important? Why is it important even in the founding that they wanted to have a destination, a place where people can come and meet? How, how does that help our economy? Why, why is that relevant? So once, you know, if a convention comes, whether it's a couple hundred to a couple thousand or tens of thousands of uh, attendees, they come and they stay in our hotels. They eat in our restaurants. They're shopping. So all of that economic impact and direct spending comes back to us and it helps with jobs um, and it also helps with our perception because our goal we want them to come here and have a great time go home and tell their friends family and co-workers about what a great time they had in mm -hmm. Detroit mm -hmm. and then come back and then host other meetings here too <laughs> right and maybe even move to Detroit. <laughs> yes, that's another thing. And right now, there are so many new developments. Like downtown, there were probably at least 50 or more different projects going on, whether it's lofts or um, other housing developments. So um, it, there's been 99%, 98% occupancy um, recently. So people are moving downtown. There are all these different amenities for you to take advantage of. So it's it's really a great time in the city. Wow. Are you, are you ever overwhelmed by, by the impact, the growth? Because it seems like for many years we were just kind of slugging along and as you said we're the comeback kid um, right now and how has this impacted you and and how are you funded how, 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 how do you all exist so the Convention and Visitors Bureau has an assessment all hotels and motels that have 35 rooms or more um, the that assessment comes to the CVB because then we are pitching for these conventions to come here and stay in those hotels and then we can market and sell the region um, we also also are a membership based organization we have have over 800 members, um, including restaurants, hotels, service providers, tour operators, um, and we work with them um, to help these conventions and to work with these um, these visitors as well. So, what's been one of the most successful conventions that's come to Detroit? Would you say one of the most successful? Two years ago, we had uh, ASAE the American Society of Association Executives, and that's the Super Bowl of conventions. Oh. Um, and those are the people who come here and they go back and tell their board members, hey, we should have our city and our convention in Detroit. So that was really big for the city. The community came together um, and uh, kind of rallied to try to you know, put our best foot forward. Um, in 2020, we have Alcoholics Anonymous coming, um, and that's another big one. It's like, uh, like kind of like another Super Bowl size. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we also had the Evangelical Lutherans. Mm -hmm. So this was tens of thousands of uh, teenagers, and that was a big deal for them to, to come here. And we all were on deck and helping out um, and making sure they had a really good experience. Have you seen any trends in the change of, of uh, or making any influence with media about how they speak about Metro Detroit? Definitely. There are so many media. We've had more media come to us um, and writing po more of the positive stories than ever. Um, earlier this year, we were on the New York Times um, uh, places to go. So that's huge. We've been on a lot of those lists in recent years, the places to go. Mm -hmm. um, and national or internationally even, we have so many. We actually have brought on someone to just specifically work with um, people from all over the world. Um, and we have representation through the state um, in Germany, China, and the UK. So wow. we're proactively reaching out to those media as well. Um, we bring them here, we do the familiarization tours, and they're usually pleasantly surprised. They have no idea, you know, what's going on. Um, and that we have like a revitalized riverfront and all of these, you know, great historic buildings and this great architecture. They really, they love that. Um, and so they come, they take all these great pictures um, and once again, go back home and share the story and uh, 
you know, help change that perception. Right. So like we have the young lady from the HGTV show who renovated a home mm -hmm. and, and that gets publicity. We just opened up a um, Department of Natural Resources kind of um, museum near the mm -hmm. waterfront. And, and so every time we kind of have these celebrities come back home and do projects in the state, um, I think we get a lot of national attention for that as well. But what's been the biggest surprise you've heard or, or seen a reaction to our city? And what, and what have the visitors been most impressed with? I think the walkability and the bikeability. People, like Detroit is such a huge city and there's so much flat land. And mm. it, you can, you know, like I mentioned the beach earlier, you don't expect to see a beach in the middle of, you know, downtown Detroit. And the riverfront, I think, blows people away too because they're so, it's so accessible. Um, you can go fishing, you can go ride your bike, you can walk up and down the riverfront. Like, it's just, it's just an amazing yeah. transformation. It is. It's, it's, it's amazing to, to see uh, just five years ago and compared to today. Just last week, we mm -hmm. have different changes. Every time I was talking earlier, you know, we, you walk down the street and there's a new restaurant or a new hotel had just opened or there's a, a sign for something else new that's coming. It's hard for me to keep track. It's hard for me to go eat at all these restaurants. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and no, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but we're doing a good job of trying to keep track of everything and try to push out the good word of everything that's happening. Okay, well, we're gonna take a break and I'm gonna come back and we're gonna talk about the MoGo and, and alternate transportation, and also another gym sitting in the city of Detroit um, that has a lot of nice features that now the state is managing. So we'll come back after this break and, uh, and, and, and talk about those things. See you right back. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Welcome back to From Lansing with Love. I'm with Deanna Mychek, the Media Relations Manager for the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau. Thank you again for being here and welcome back. Uh, so when we left off on the break, I said there is this gym that we have sitting in our downtown Detroit's own Central Park, uh, so to speak. Bell Isle. And since the uh, state has taken over management or since it's become a state park, there's been lots of improvements happening. Um, what are some kind of, what are some of the improvements that you know of and what are some of the, um, the visions for future improvements to the park? Some of the major improvements include removing the dead trees and just cleaning up the park, um, which is a big deal for, you know, visitors who are coming there, mm -hmm. making more restrooms accessible. Um, the, scout font, the scout fountain is now open or is now up and running mm -hmm. um, more than it was in the past. Um, in the future, they're looking at having more recreational activities. They have canoeing and kayaking rental there now, um, but they want to expand on that. They also, I've heard, uh, might open up like a restaurant or a cafe, so you can go there and then go mm. eat and go do all your you know, recreation activities. Um, they have uh, done a lot of work on the buildings, including like the conservatory and the casino. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize that there are all these little attractions in this park, like the Dawson Great Lakes Museum, mm -hmm. the conservatory, and the aquarium. Um, are they going to reopen the aquarium? The aquarium is open. It it's is open. open um, limited, like on okay. the weekends, mm -hmm. um, but that is open. And then the greenhouse? Mm -hmm. that's yep, the conservatory, the that's conservatory. open too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's, it's, it's just beautiful, but you mentioned walking on the beach. We can do that in Bel on Belle Isle, and yep. then there's canoeing and, and fishing. But you also mentioned bike riding. So we have new mogul in the city, but what about on Belle Isle? Do you think they'll make some trails or maybe some horseback riding? 
I don't know if we go as far as horseback, horseback riding, riding. Oh, but shucks. there there okay. are a lot of biking options. Okay. Um, and right on the riverfront, there's a, a company called uh, Wheelhouse Detroit, and you can rent a bike there, and you can take that um, all the way to the Belle Isle. I've we've actually I've done it before, um, and uh, it's it's a really nice ride to be able to see the entire island. Um, and then, like you said, with the Mogo, you could also rent those bikes if you wanted to go over to Belle yeah. Isle. Tell, tell us about Mogo. I see these bikes all over now in different areas that you it looks like you can rent or do something mm -hmm. how where did this come from and yeah <laughs> so this is through the downtown detroit partnership okay. and there are bikes it's pretty much east and west of woodward so if you're going to take woodward you're going to take the q line but then if you want to go in the neighborhoods or the other east and west uh, streets there are these bike setups and it's eight dollars a day which is a lot more affordable than paying to park or mm -hmm. you know go move your car around um and it's in 30 minute increments so it's t to get from point a to point b so let's say i want to either go to lunch or i have a meeting that's up in midtown i can get on a bike ride it up and then dock it. My meeting's over, get on it, and then ride it back and then dock it. Um, so uh, they have, uh, all, everything's online and they have an app too. So you can kind of see uh, where all the bikes are and see how many bikes are there. They have ambassadors out because it just launched a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. but they've had a lot of, uh, a lot of great uh, feedback on yeah. this program. So the ridership is good mm -hmm. for that? Mm -hmm. That's really exciting. And so we're becoming, and I see this particularly when I'm in the Wayne State University campus area, a lot more folks riding bikes and walking. And so there, there's going to have to be some education done about sharing the road with, with bike riders as well. Yes. They did that with that and with the Q line um, as well because uh, people were not used to this, you mm -hmm. know. Like I said, everyone drives, and so having all this other uh, forms of mobility, and there's also a lot more bike lanes, and they're adding more bike lanes, um, mm -hmm. which is really exciting. And 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 the Q line, I know they had a um, a free period to ride every time I'm on Woodward, and that Q line passes. It is packed to capacity with people. Mm -hmm. um, do you know if they've extended that? They did. Okay. Um, it's extended through Labor Day now. Okay. So every time you get on there, it is. It's jam-packed, um, and it's really nice because you can get from downtown and all the way to Midtown, which you couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. Well, that's nice. Um, so speaking of Labor Day, what's coming up in August and September? What are What's on the calendar? What can we look forward to in the city of Detroit? So one of the biggest um, events in August is the Woodward Dream Cruise. That happens out in the suburbs from uh, along Woodward Avenue from uh, Ferndale all the way to Pontiac. And it is the biggest car festival ever. It's the largest one day car festival. Um, and there's like 40,000 muscle cars up and down Woodward, uh, Woodward Avenue, uh, millions of spectators. Yeah. People are out there all week. Uh, they have their lawn chairs watching the cars go by. Mm -hmm. But then on that Saturday is the big day where um, they're cruising up and down the down uh, Woodward Avenue. Um, and then when you get into Labor Day weekend, there's a really, uh, ex that's an exciting weekend for uh, whether you want to do your staycation that weekend. Um, we've got the Jazz Festival that takes place uh, at Campus Marshes to Hart Plaza, um, and it's free. So you get all these uh, really great acts. Um, and then there's Arts, Beats, and Eats um, over mm. in Royal Oak. Um, so it's music, food, um, and uh, a lot of great entertainment um, and art. And then out at Suburban Collection Showplace is the State Fair. Um, and there's that, you know, typical state fair with all, all the animals and the, the midway, and they also have the Shrine Circus there, too. Okay. Um, and then out in Macomb, there is the Peach Festival. So there's all these different activities. You could do one each day or, you know, do them all in the weekend. So. Wow. There's never an opportunity to be bored. Not and, at all. Not and, at all. There is so much to do. Even if I pick up a Metro Times and I'm going, oh, God, I'm overwhelmed with the options that we have. But Detroit is also known for signature events. Mm -hmm. So what are some of our, in Metro Detroit, some of our signature events um, that you are? I would say um, the Ford Fireworks, which take place at the end of June. Um, it's a beautiful show. It's, it's really nice, like none other. It's one of the, the largest in the country, um, right on the Detroit River. Um, and you can see it on both sides, Canada and um, in Detroit. Um, there's also the Woodward Dream Cruise, which I already mentioned. Uh, America's Thanksgiving Day Parade yeah. is huge. Mm -hmm. That happens Thanksgiving morning on uh, along Woodward Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, and then the North American International Auto Show is another uh, signature event that takes place in January. People from all over the world come to that. Yeah. Detroit is doing big things. And I, and I think sometimes when we are used to being here, we kind of lose sight of the fact that it's pretty major mm -hmm. um, to have have a Thanksgiving Day parade that's televised nationally, um, to have an international 
fireworks show um, where many major metropolitan cities don't really invest that money. And so this year with Ford being the sponsor, it's huge to our North American International Auto Show. Um, it's, it's just amazing. And we have the opportunity to really celebrate and enjoy those programs right here and those um, activities and events in the city of Detroit. But here's the other exciting thing. We have this new Little Caesars Arena coming in online. And so not only will we have Red Wing Hockey downtown, Lions football, Tigers baseball, but then we get our Pistons back. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have basketball. Is there anything else that you know of coming to that Little Caesars Arena? Any breaking news? I don't have breaking news, <laughs> but there will be a lot of really cool concerts. Uh, they've already announced, like, uh, Kid Rock is going to be the opener. Um, I think Lady Gaga, Ed Sheeran. So there's going to be these world-renowned acts that are going to be at Little Caesars Arena. They're going to have programming. I believe she, they said around, like, 300 days a year. So it's not just about the basketball and the hockey and the uh, the entertainment. So there's always going to be programming there. So even if you don't have a ticket to something, you can still uh, experience this uh, brand new district. Yeah. You know, I have been working um, all term on job creation, making Michigan, particularly um, metropolitan Detroit, an attractive place to work and to attract business to the area. And the Little Caesars Arena has definitely done that with our construction and skilled trades jobs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it's had a great impact on our economy, just those jobs. And then the other projects that's going to come online from the queue line to this, we'll see more re um, construction and rehab work downtown. But what do you, what do you think uh, the the major the other impact this development has on the city of Detroit? This is going to be huge because there's you know along with the arena there's also going to be t there's talks of hotels and restaurants and retail so it's just revitalizing that area and it's the big part is it's connecting the downtown and the midtown and the new center um, because before there was really it was kind of it was parking lots you know mm -hmm. and so now um, you can come down and have a great experience right in that whole, you know, the district, mm -hmm. that new entertainment district. And like you mentioned with jobs, they said they're going to have around 1,100 permanent jobs. Um, so there's all these different types of skill sets, not on just the construction side, right. but you're going to need people to run those hotels and to work in those restaurants and at those shops. So there's going to be a lot of great opportunities. Yeah. This is, this is I, I think, is very exciting to, to see the buzz that's, that's coming online. But also, the, there are people who sometimes look at all the new development and creation and they're not that excited and it and i think there are people in the city who feel may feel like uh they're pushing out the the people who've been there for years and years and years who've invested and now um the new shiny kid comes in town and they're moving the uh the old establishment and businesses away is there anything the visitors bureau is doing to kind of bridge that so we have we still embrace the old, but welcome the new at the same time. We really work with our members and keeping them involved or informed on what's going on um, with one another um, and uh, welcoming in those new people and the old people. Because it seems like we have such a, a nice community um, and they actually are working together. We're all working towards the same cause. So um, I think that the different businesses are working hand in hand and trying to make us all a better city. So this is, I am very proud to be a Detroiter, and there's so many things to be proud about in this city, whether it's the Charles H. Wright Museum, the uh, Michigan Science Center, the Detroit Institute of Art, Motown Museum, um, Electronic Music Festival, the Free Jazz Concert, the largest international free mm -hmm. jazz concert. We have lovely theaters, not, not just to mention the Fox, but the Fisher, mm -hmm. um, the Hillberry, the Bonsdale College. We have Collegiate. So it, it's, it's everything. Anything else, uh, Deanna, that we should be looking forward to and, and that your the, the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau can do for people watching this show today? I say just... Uh Help us spread the positive word of what's going on in Detroit. Um, come down and experience it yourself. Um, we're out and about all the time. We have a mobile visitor center called the D Rover that's um, all over the metro area at these events, so you can learn more about what's going on. Uh, go to our website, visitdetroit.com, read our magazine, see our show. Um, just help us spread that positive word and be part of the comeback city. Be part of that uh, major comeback. Well, folks. That's about all the time we have today. And I'd like to once again thank my guest, the wonderful Deanna Mychek. 
the media relations manager for the Detroit Metro Conventions and Visitors Bureau, for joining us today. Thank you so much. There's so much happening in the city of Detroit, and I really hope that everyone has an opportunity to just go out and have explore your own city. Um, have a staycation, not a vacation this summer. And I just want to say thank you to all of you for watching. If you have an idea for a show or would like to be a show guest, please contact my office, and that contact information will be on the screen. So until next time, be good to yourself and each other. And with that, we're all clear and out of here. <laughs>